Hey, I'm back and um, wanted to talk more in the subject area of consciousness and the potential of us achieving new levels of group consciousness and micro consciousness and even maybe moving toward a leap as a species into uh, a kind of a networked consciousness such as collectively becoming Christ consciousness or Buddha consciousness or Gaia consciousness. So an entire species waking up to the view of its connected networked self as a self so that I'm not just tree I'm also a living breathing part of a planet called Gaia for instance okay so to get from here to there um, I encourage you to watch my previous video to this one which I haven't named yet but it's probably called on becoming macro conscious that sounds good <laughs> and <laughs> Um, and also a video from 10 months ago called The Location of Consciousness is going to be an important part of this ongoing conversation to have awareness of those ideas. So thanks for that. And so in my previous video, I was showing you this wonderful artwork by Meridian Azura and uh, using this as an example. And just to pick up a thread that I didn't follow in the last video, so here you are, you're a human, you're, you're, this is your local self. Well, this is my local self, but you know what I mean. And um, you're connected to your higher self. And whether you're conscious of it today or not, your higher self is always connected to you. Um, it's a source of guidance, uh, intuition, um, you, it's, it's timeless, it's infinite, it's um, everywhere at all times. And um, when an individual has, through whatever set of practices and means, when the individual has uh, cleared herself of enough of the egoic individual local distractions, an individual can channel the infinite awareness and vibration of that higher self more often. And so I'm going to give you an example of how I think this would look. And you don't have to agree with me on everything that I'm saying. I'm inviting you to suspend your disbelief for a few moments just to consider a um, just to consider this view that I am going to propose and that is that you are like a neuron in a planetary neural network and that you are also like a neuron in a neural network of the egregores in which you participate. So in the last video I used an example of Google Suppose you work for Google. Um, Google is a macro conscious entity that is today unconscious of itself as a self. It doesn't behave in a fully conscious and unified way. There's corporate personhood, but is it really realizing itself as a self? And I would say no. Okay, so um, you would as a member of the egregore, you are a neuron in the neural network of each of the egregores that you participate in. So, um, I want to, now that I'm <clears throat> talking about neural networks, and I'm going to give an example of an actual person, and I'm going to go back and forth between using our anatomy as a model and also using this specific person as an illustration. So bear with me. This book right here, oh, low battery. 
This is a picture of neurons. Uh, nerve cells are called neurons. It's been magnified 500 times and there are billions and billions of these inside of each of our brains and you've heard of them. They fire little electrical signals and that when you have that feeling of a light bulb going off that's literally neural networks lighting up, um, understanding new connections between thoughts that you've had. You know, you, ah, you suddenly get it. It just clicks. It's literally a lightning storm inside your brain where a bunch of neurons are all flashing and they're all interconnected. And I'm looking for another picture. This shows, let's make sure you can see that. Okay. This is a bunch of neural networks and they're joined by hubs called dendrites. And it is similar to the way it would look to have bunches and bunches of tree roots. Uh, if you could have x-ray vision and look down at the forest and instead of seeing the trees, see the root system. They'd be interconnected and um, the word dendrite has the same root as dendrology, the study of trees. And that's why. So why am I talking about this? Okay, so suppose you were an individual who became so successful at being united with this highest self, a divine version of yourself, that you could not necessarily contain all of that juju inside of your flesh and your local self, but you could channel it multiple times. You might be considered a guru. This is one of those individuals who's considered a guru. Sri Karunamai, also known as Ama, is considered to be a living incarnation of the Divine Feminine. And while she identifies or people identify her with uh, Sarasvati, she is also very clear within her cosmology that there is only one creator, one ultimate Godhead. But also within that, there are these different aspects of godliness that are sometimes associated with the names of other deities. So she might resonate with Sarasvati, but she's pretty much aware that she's channeling godliness, and that can include Lakshmi, and that can include Yeshua, and she feels great about uh, all the known names for deities. Super Kali, Freya, Lilith, Expialidocious. It's just all of it right there. <clears throat> so this is the part where I'm asking you to suspend disbelief because you probably don't know her, and you might have a charge around the word guru. Just put that to the side for a minute. Suppose that this woman had gotten so good at channeling her higher self that she actually became like a dendrite in a neural network. Okay, so this is another piece of artwork by Meridian Azura. Um, she threw this in when I ordered the other piece because it reminded her of me and I don't know if she realizes just how damn perfect that is. <laughs> so this is a woman standing at a tree. I submit to you that a woman who has done enough work and can channel higher divine energy into the room or the system or the organization or the nation or the place, even for just an hour a year, that that woman during that time is behaving as a dendrite in a planetary neural network. Okay, so tying this back to what I was saying about egregores in the last video, if we as a species want to have healthy systems, environmental, economic, social, 
healthy, healthy, fully functioning systems, we need to bring consciousness to the level of the egregores who are operating, transacting, and behaving on the planet. Now, I don't know that we're all going to ever agree on anything. So I'm not saying that you have to awaken to Christ consciousness or that you have to awaken to Gaia consciousness or Buddha consciousness. I think that we can strive for bringing more consciousness to our home, our family, our community, the organizations that we uh, work for and in and lead, etc. And so the, to do that, as we're striving uh, for our self-actualization, to actualize as our best and highest self means also to bring that same kind of energy, this higher, clear, infinite, to become a channel and bring that energy into all of these groups in which we are members. So let's use an example of say 10 people. So there's 10 people who are a part of a team and they haven't yet realized themselves as a self, a, a unit comprised of 10 brains, but synchronistically, synergistically, something bigger, a whole self as of now unconscious of itself as a self. So if these 10 people, if one or more of them do a really good job of aligning with and opening to a higher stream of consciousness, then they can become like a dendrite and then distribute the information, the experience, the awareness, the knowledge, the consciousness, the feelings through these neural networks, through the, the network of interconnection between the 10 people. So if I have a peak experience and light up and become aware and become conscious, even temporarily, of something and I get you really excited about it, then you light up and then you light up and we just need a critical mass of uh, neurons who fire in order for us to have that light bulb going off, electrical storm in the brain, so that a group of people can flash into macro consciousness. And you may have had this experience with a close group of friends while you were on a retreat or doing some deep healing work or going through something supporting one of your besties who's in a crisis. There are all kinds of moments in which we have transcended the boundary of the local self and merged into some higher self that's conscious of itself as a self. Okay, so take that now to something like being Google or being America or being the First Baptist Church, whatever affiliations you're a part of. The more of us that become conscious of the possibility of there being something like a neural network from brain to brain instead of from neuron to neuron, we can then raise the consciousness. So what happens when a country becomes aware of itself as a self? Well, to answer that, think about what happened when you became aware of yourself as a self. Aren't all things possible when we become self-aware. So I'm aware that I'm tree and I'm aware that I'm functioning as part of a number of egregores and the more conscious each member becomes, the greater the chance for a, a collective awakening within each egregore. So, um, a couple of the individuals who were in the movie What the Bleep Do We Know have been actively involved in the Institute of Noetic Sciences and um, studying consciousness. And 
one of the individuals, I'm going to have to look up his name, it's really bad that I didn't figure this out sooner, <laughs> talked about um, the, the leap, the potential for the human species to take a leap in consciousness as he called it the big wow. And um, it's, it's like unto the idea that the universe started with a big bang. And, uh, and as consciousness evolves, if the entire universe suddenly awoke to itself as one unified self, then whoosh, that would be the big wow. And I want to talk more about that in another video. But right now, I'm just encouraging each of us to continue to do your work and to be consciously conducting information and frequencies and feelings from as high a source as possible into the areas, the networks, the egregores, the communities, the, all of your relations. So be as clear as you can and share that and lift up others. And over time, I believe that the human species will take several evolutionary leaps. And we don't necessarily ever have to surrender being a local self. Some people get all freaked out about this hive mind idea that maybe the drones don't have any free will and the queen runs everything. And what if the queen is not a, a nice benevolent dictator? <laughs> Um, yeah, there are aspects of this hive mind thing that would be really scary. But in those cases, there's a surrendering of free will. So if you're starting to feel nervous about what I'm saying, <laughs> I just want to encourage you to remember that we don't have to evolve into a macro conscious entity in which we've surrendered free will. So again, I'm uh, needing to cut the video off so that it will upload because I have slow internet. So rest assured, there will be more about this. And let me know what your questions are. If there's something that I glossed over too quickly, tell me and I will um, double click on some of these smaller sub concepts in order to build the case. And so I'm excited to get to share this with you and I hope that a couple of you will resonate with what I'm saying and, and let's see what happens next. Thanks.